Today, we're going to talk about how to get your program to run a particular piece of code whenever it exits. It's sort of like a destructor for your program. Let's check it out. Welcome back, my friends. I hope you're all doing well. Today, I want to show you something that, well, it's something that you don't need and then you don't need. And then when you need it, most people don't know how to do it. So our challenge for today is, let's say I have a function and basically just whenever my program exits, no matter how it exits, whatever reason, I want it to run this function. I want it to call this function. And that sounds pretty straightforward. And it actually is pretty straightforward once you know how to do it. I'm going to show you how to do it in C. The same technique works just fine in C++. And then after that example, I'm going to take you through a few other languages and just show you how this is pretty much available everywhere. And I'm also going to talk about some of the gotchas and limitations that you're going to run into with this approach. And so stick with this video through the end to make sure you don't get any surprises. Code for this video and others, as usual, is available through Patreon. A big thanks to all of you who support this channel. And if you've been with this channel for a while, if you're enjoying the content, if you're finding these videos useful, please do like the video. Each like, each subscription basically sends a message to YouTube that this is high quality content and it encourages them to get the word out to other people. And so it really helps this channel grow. So thanks. Now let's jump into the code. OK, for today's video, I just want to keep things super simple. So we're just going to make a little program. Let's start here with a skeleton here. And what I want to do is I want this program to take in a number, a single argument, and then print out the square of that number, something super simple like that. Now, you'll notice here that I also have a make file, and it's going to basically compile my program. Nothing fancy in here. I do have some make videos if you need a refresher or if you haven't seen make files before. And as I mentioned, I already have a main in here. So let's just add a little bit of code to here. Let's check our arguments. Let's see if argc is not equal to 2. Not equal to 2. OK, so if argc is not equal to 2, then I'm just going to print f. I'm going to print out a usage message. This is really common in a lot of terminal programs. Remember that so two arguments, the first one is the name of the program. So I'm going to print that out and then a number. So this program is going to involve a number. You're going to call it. You're going to run it with a number. And then we'll print out argv0. OK, and then here we're just going to return exit failure because yeah, because basically we just, the person doesn't know how to use the program. They use it incorrectly. So we're letting them know this is how you're supposed to use it and carry on. But if they used it correctly, if we did have two arguments, then what we're going to do is we're going to take a value, an integer value, and we're going to use a TOI to take the argument. So argv1, the numerical argument that was passed in, we're going to convert it to an integer and save it as value. And then let's just print f let's print out the basically we're going to square it but it just be a little more verbose so let's just say the number squared is equal to percent d so these are just two integers and we'll come through here and get value and value times value okay and then we will return exit success. And the exit failure and exit success are really just there in case anyone is paying attention to the exit code of this program and wants to find out whether it was successful or not. That's just common convention. OK, so let's say that I have something that I want to do whenever this program exits. OK, in a real program, this might be something like deleting temporary files or writing some status information to a log file, something like that just to let people know that the program ended and then maybe restarted later on in case that's helpful in interpreting the log file. Now, for simplicity in this program, I don't want to add a bunch of extra logging information or temporary files. Let me know down in the comments if you want to see more about temporary files or server logs or things like that. We can definitely talk about it. But for today, let's just pick something really simple. Let's just say that I would really like to thank people for using my program. OK, so I can just say print f. Thank you. OK, so I could add it here. Of course, I can also exit the program up here. So I'm adding thank you in both places. And of course, this is going to work, right? We can compile this and we can run it. And you're going to see, OK, yeah, I don't know how to use it right here. But then if I say 45, you notice it works. And each time, regardless of whether I was successful in squaring the number or unsuccessful, you notice that it prints out thank you. But it's ugly. If you haven't learned this yet, you will. 
programmers don't like duplicating code like this. We don't like having the same code in a bunch of different places. And as I make this program more complicated, I have to put this code anywhere in the program that it might exit. And I'm just worried that I might forget one of them. Or let's say that I want to update the message. I have to update it in all those different places. So what we really want is some way that we can just say, hey, whenever the program exits, for whatever reason, and in whatever piece of code, just call a particular function for me. And in C or C++, we can do that with a function called at exit, OK? So what we can do is up here at the beginning, we can just say something like at exit cleanup. OK, now what this is saying is when this program exits, I want you to run a piece of code, a function called cleanup. OK, now what we're going to do, let's go up here and actually make our cleanup function because that's it's not going to compile without it. But we can say void cleanup and then print F and we're going to add our thank you. Now, of course, we could do a lot more than thank you in here, but this will work for our example. And then I'm just going to come down here and remove the thank yous from my program. So this is a little simpler and I'm not repeating myself. And now as long as I didn't make any mistakes, we should be able to compile it and we should be able to run it. And you can see that we still get the behavior that we got before. We get thank yous in both places. So that's pretty cool. Now there's a few things about at exit that I want to mention to you. First of all, it only works when the program exits normally. So let's say that something bad happens and the program exits by calling abort. So let's say that I decide that if argc equals three, that that's like really, really bad. And let's just change this up a little. Well, I won't return. What I'm going to do is just call abort. And instead of just giving a nice usage message, we will say, ah, and remove our argv zero. OK, so say we have a case that's like really, really bad that we just decide like abort, get out of dodge. In this case, if I compile and I then try to run it, you see the thank you, you see thank you here. If I add another one, you notice that I get just the ah message. And because it aborts, it doesn't call exit. And so at exit is not called. It doesn't run our cleanup code, nothing. It just gets out. And I want to point this out because this is also going to be the same for most crashes. You know, so a seg fault, for example, not going to call exit. A divide by zero error, not going to call exit. So a lot of people, when they see at exit at first, they think, oh, this would be great for catching errors, for handling exceptions. And that's not really it. At exit isn't really going to work for error checking or crash handling. I mean, you can check for errors that are predictable errors, but not crashes. So for that, well, I do have a past video on signal handling that touches on that a little bit. And there are a few other ways that we could try to handle errors. Do let me know down in the comments if you'd like to hear more about handling crashes and error cases. But the main point is that for crash handling, at exit is not going to be what you're looking for. This function is for cleaning up after regular, normal, non-bug, non-crash cases. So keep that in mind. Now, another thing about at exit is that you can submit more than one function to at exit. So this is useful if you have a bunch of different modules or libraries and each want to do their own cleanup thing. So just to show you how this works, we can let's just make two of these and say, let's make this one called cleanup two. And this one is it's going to one's going to say thank you. And one's going to say thanks again. OK, and then down here we can say at exit cleanup one and cleanup two. OK, so we just added another call to at exit. Now let's come down here and see what happens if we compile and if we run it. Now you're going to notice that we get both cleanup routines are being called, but notice that they didn't show up in the order that we submitted the requests. Now I'm guessing under the hood they're using a stack or something to keep track of these. So we're going to get them in reverse order. If you look at the man pages, you can see it, it clearly specifies that. But the main point is, is that if ordering matters, you want to keep in mind that they're showing up in the reverse order or even better, it's a good idea to have your cleanup functions be fairly independent of each other so that you don't get weird dependencies due to the ordering of how they get called. Also, uh, there is a limit to the number of function pointers that we can put in here, the number of requests we can make. Typically, that number is at least 32. I believe that's the required amount that it has to support at least 32. Some systems are going to allow more. But if you ever want to have a lot of functions that run at exit, I would be very careful. You might want to think about making your own function that handles your vast number of cleanup functions. Now, like I said before, this is not just a C and C++ thing. You're going to find at exit or something very much like it in a lot of other languages, maybe every other language. I don't know. Let me just show you a couple examples. So I got one here. This is a Ruby version, and it basically just has at exit, which takes a block. So kind of the same thing. Basically, this is just the same program that we were using before, slightly different, but the same basic functionality. And you can see if I run it, 
that I get. Thank you for using my software. That's showing up just fine. If I jump over to Python, so I have a similar version. There's a module called at exit, interestingly named. And I can do the same thing where I have a thanks function like this. I can come down here and say, register that thanks function to be run at exit. And then, yeah, so then I can come down here and do the same thing. And you're going to get the same behavior in each of these different languages. And I could also show you this in Java. I don't really have time for that today, but if you're interested in how it's done in Java, search for shutdown hooks in Java or at exit equivalent in Java, and you're gonna find lots of documentation about shutdown hooks, which is basically how you can get the same kind of behavior in Java. But the point is, this is widely available capability in nearly any language out there. And while you aren't going to use it in every program, it's useful to have in your toolkit when you do need it. If you like this video, help us reach more people by dropping this video a like, subscribe so you don't miss next week's video. And until then, folks, I'll see you later.